So this is a change of program, as you will have uh, noticed, as Laurent said. And um, first of all, let me uh, thank uh, Sue and uh, Sue Helen Hopt and, and, and the anchor people for the fantastic la night last night. I think it was a superb uh, setting, and the food was also really, really good. And, and it's uh, all thanks to the work of Sue and colleagues there. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, secondly, uh, we reali realized that uh, the uh, event last night might have been a bit confusing to many or most, and uh, that was done a bit deliberately because we didn't want to take too much time out of your uh, enjoyment of the refreshments, and that's why we've uh, taken this opportunity. If it wasn't now, we would have done it in uh, another slot during the conference. We were already thinking about that before we did the uh, last night's event. And so we would like to just now have uh, about 30 minutes, and I would like to invite my colleagues, uh, Laurent, back again, please, and Sue, Ellen, and Mohammed to take uh, questions from you. Uh, before um, we do that, I just uh, I put this slide up. This, um, so this World Energy and Meteorology Council comes out of uh, some discussions that uh, we've uh, had uh, with uh, uh, many people uh, at various levels over the last year, and the document has been produced. This is the front page, which gives the motivation. And uh, there is a nutshell. You can try to crack it. Uh, it's at the top there. I don't know if you, read it, you can read it. And I'm happy to distribute the, uh, the, this file afterwards. And, and then we also have the uh, motivation, which is given as a why, how, and what and particularly the why is the key thing there. So i uh, just read the why, and I uh, won't we'll read all the rest, just to give you an idea of what this uh, council is about. So we, we strongly believe we can uh, substantially increase the resilience and efficiency of energy systems under the influence of ever-changing weather and climate to achieve a more affordable and available energy and thereby foster sustainable and resilient energy systems. So there's a lot of big words there. Um, but in practice, what, what it is is that, uh, uh, as I said yesterday, there's been uh, this series of conferences that uh, have uh, started to create a community, and uh, we also felt there was a need to have a, a more cohesive dialogue with the community, and that, uh, as I said yesterday, the conference uh, wouldn't be sufficient for that. So we thought of a kind of association around this conference that would provide some uh, point of reference for the community. And the way this is going to operate is, is still very open, and that's why we have that uh, stakeholder survey. And we, again, encourage you to take uh, that survey that is going to be very helpful for the, uh, the way we uh, will run this council. And, uh, and so, as I said, we have some uh, ideas of what to do, but uh, uh, we'd like to have the engagement of uh, uh, most of you, and if you're interested, and so that's why we would like to have this uh, question and answer session. And so I will stop there now with the introduction, unless uh, my colleagues want to add anything. So yeah, we'll take questions. And uh, please go to the microphone. And, uh, and we'll uh, try to ask, answer the questions as best as I can, even though we, don't, we haven't gone through the survey yet. Uh, product manager looking at using weather data and intelligence uh, for uh, energy applications. So. Uh, so one of the comments that I had was that uh, while uh, this conference and, and this council as an extension of that would be doing a fantastic job of looking at solving problems um, in terms of forecasting and there's a lot of focus on the generation side uh, if, if I can reference let's say utilities uh, I just feel that there needs to be uh, as much if not more focus on uh, operational resilience of a lot of these uh, a lot of electric utilities or gas utilities, and uh, this could extend into, there could be similar uh, problems to solve, even in, in concepts such as smart cities, where uh, folks are looking at uh, finding out solutions.
to make them to make cities uh, utility supply um, all that resilient to for example severe weather so uh, so that's just a suggestion that I had uh, some of it uh, was covered in the talk by was that uh, Dave Jones I think he he talked about uh, some part of it but I think overall <clears throat> there's a there's kind of a need to address that part as well uh, so uh, I'd, I'd love to see more um, experts such as yourselves uh, working on on those problems too so is there, I don't know if there's a there's a plan already in place but uh, there are the huge problems to solve and uh, it, it's resulting in, in in economic loss so you actually have a very strong economic case for working in in those areas there are uh, for utilities if you just and I'll cover some of this in my talk tomorrow about uh, weather readiness uh, for utilities, but uh, they're losing billions of dollars or having to advance uh, capital investments to make their infrastructure more resilient, and uh, they, there, isn't, there aren't enough people working on solving those problems, is my feeling. And I hope uh, WMC kind of contributes to that area as well. And it, we probably have plans I just didn't come across initially. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shilish. Uh, just a quick uh, answer from me, and then I'll leave it to the rest. Uh, so, so uh, as, as just a, as an approach, uh, uh, what, what you say is very, very important. And uh, what we're trying to do is to link more and more with industry, because we, uh, I think as a community here, we, what we're trying to do is to make uh, all the science relevant to industry problems. And, and, th and, and therefore, your input is, is very, very important, and we would like to uh, you know, strengthen that link and, and maybe, you know, uh, discuss more how we can uh, link with you. Thanks. Uh, and then just a quick comment. It's true that the, the community here and the, the, the base on which we're working is uh, probably biased. It's not a good word, but uh, it's biased towards electricity, it's biased towards generation, and in particular to wind and power, because it was our initial network. So we've been building things on this, but it's true that we want to extend to the whole community, not only the electrical sector, but as well the oil and gas sector and so on. And uh, uh, for this, we need to, to extend the network, we need to extend the community, and uh, your kind of inputs uh, can be very, very relevant and very useful, and you're very welcome to contribute, to bring some stakeholders, to bring users, uh, to uh, encourage them to come with their practical problems on which we could work on. Just to add uh, very quickly to that, uh, I think uh, to address this point, uh, there is a panel session tomorrow, which will be presented by Max Dilly, who is here on the Global Framework for Climate Services. And our intention was to be able to prepare all the MET community, which is working on that, to be able to serve this, uh, this interest or this uh, agenda. And so we will maybe work more uh, tomorrow on that. Thank you, Mohamed. In fact, uh, uh, thank you for raising that. In fact, uh, I also primed uh, Max uh, on this and uh, asked uh, him to step in if he would like to say anything at any stage. Uh, because what we're trying to do is really to reinforce what uh, the uh, global framework is doing. And in fact, I've been, uh, you know, being heavily involved in the in the in the preparation for that. And so we we do see that uh, link very uh, a very useful thing to do and we want to obviously continue and want to make uh, the global framework as successful as it can be. And I would just like to add that, you know, we appreciate comments like that. Um, you know, WEMC is not just a few people, a board and a, and a council. Um, it really is a community of people. We consider the entire community here part of WEMC, as well as other stakeholders who may not be here. We welcome input from everyone. Dushanka, please. Dushanka Zupensky from uh, Zupensky Consulting. Uh, maybe you already answered the question, the question I had because uh, the previous question, it is related. Uh, but I, I was thinking whether or not you already have in mind some very specific uh, action items is a kind, kind of couple of items. Uh, maybe it would depend uh, on the outcome of discussions here and also on the outcome of, on the survey. But I was thinking 
maybe you already have something in mind. Uh, yes. Yeah, and in fact, uh, uh, thanks for that. Uh, if you actually go to the survey, you will see what the thinking is behind. So we have uh, suggestions there, and you, uh, you will see that we divided the work in uh, uh, policy type of uh, questions, uh, in research type of questions, and capacity building, essentially three main areas. And, and you will see that there are suggestions for each of those areas, and uh, we are asking you to rank those suggestions so that uh, there's probably seven or, or eight for each of those categories and uh, and so yeah that's that's the uh, we, we prepare that background work but then from then on uh, you know it's it, it input from you well you know I'm, I'm very much practical down to earth so my question uh, is what are your ideas and how should that work practically? Is it about, let's say, setting up a mailing list where everyone here in the room is invited to join and that will be the main information flow mechanism for a while? Or is it uh, going to Australia every three months for a kind of committee meeting or a kind of community meeting? Um, everything in between, I mean, my work's desktop sharing, workshops, summer schools, uh, what kind of mechanisms uh, are you having in mind? Okay, so, uh, you know, WMC is in the midst of incorporating. There will likely, uh, you know, be a, a specific location that will be home base of WMC. Um, we expect to have, you know, we already have a council, a board of directors that is appointed. Uh, last night you heard from Charlie Smith as well as Dave Renee, who are council members. We have others in addition. Um, there will be, you know, those, those council members will be the leadership, but we will be asking the community for their ideas on what they would like to see happen. Um, you know, there, we're, we're talking about things like workshops, uh, analyses of economic impact of weather information. You know, there are lots of ideas out there, and that's where we're asking the community here to tell us what you think we really need. We don't want the ideas to just be the four of us or the four of us plus the board of directors. We want them to come from the community. We want them to be practical and to meet the needs of the energy industry as well as to link with the scientific emphasis that many folks here have and to give a good, solid scientific basis of what we as meteorologists and climatologists know and can apply in the energy industry to make it more resilient. If I may add uh, something to, to that, is we speak about research and industry but I think we know that there is a need from the industry of some operational product, some operational link. And it is there we spoke about, spoke about the GFCS. So the main issue, for instance, what we did for that is already the team is working with WMO on uh, uh, developing what you call the global framework for climate services, but the energy exemplar, the, just uh, the, the, the guidance which will help understand this link between operation and the industry, the need of the industry. Adding to that, our main, maybe main concern now is how to get organized so we really don't come together every two years and uh, go through presentation and some recommendation and between there is nothing. It is what happened between uh, the first, the second and the third. So. We are looking for ways and means to carry those recommendations. If there is something which happens within this, me I call it the stakeholder meeting or the general assembly, I am told that we should we should keep a bit uh, quiet about that. But uh, no, I, we, it is there where I learn something. But the question is if you spend three days or five days working very hard, and after we just wait until the next meeting, and we thought that it will be a waste of energy. So that is how we start the process. And so the process will be evolving. Personally, my dream will be to make use of those regular meetings of ICEM as the think tank. And so it is from there that we will go. 
and not uh, uh, creating an independent body which will maybe carry another mandate. Thank you. And, and let me just add, because uh, I know that uh, also, what that was the aim of Marion's question, in a sense, uh, around uh, newsletters and so on, uh, the practical aspects. So, uh, if you wish, we can organize uh, a number of meetings in Australia, if that's uh, what you'd like to do. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, no, we, we, are, we are already getting ready also for the website. So, if you look at the w survey, there's a link to the website. It's actually linked to the ICM conference at the moment. But this, the, the domain has been bought, and the idea is to have a website with uh, a mailing list, and, and so people can join, subscribe to that, and then we'll provide uh, newsletters, and you can contribute to that, and, and, and so on. So that, that's one of the aspects to keep the communication going. And, and there's others that uh, you can suggest, and that we're also looking into. Prashant, you're still uh, on the line? Sure. Uh, just want to make one. Um, as I said, it might be already in the survey or in the website or something. But last couple of days, we have seen a lot of discussion on renewables and meteorology. Uh, the title you know, of the conference and OMC is energy and meteorology. So there are obviously certain aspects of energy that go or beyond the renewables. Uh, for example, nuclear energy and meteorology in its various you know, aspects like fallout and so on. Uh, I was wondering if you are going to cover those as well, or is it going to be mostly renewable-centric? Okay, okay. I'll just give a quick one, and then I, I'll leave it. So, uh, thanks for the question. So, I, I um, actually, in many of my presentations I, I give, I actually give, uh, show the current um, use of energy, and the current use of energy is that uh, uh, about 20% is renewables and 80% is the rest. So, we need to, uh, given that we are you know, dealing with energy, we need to uh, have that fact uh, uh, in mind, and 80% is not going to disappear anytime soon, so it will it'll probably decrease. The uh, reason, again, uh, it goes back to the one of the, I think, the point that uh, Laurent was making before, the reason why the uh, uh, renewables is represented, overrepresented in a sense here, is that uh, that's where we start, and and we would like to make it broader uh, if we can. We've, uh, we've uh, had, uh, uh, you know, we try to uh, attract people from uh, oil industry. There's a strong community, for example, called Met Ocean, and um, they've had, they have their own association under the oil and gas industry. And uh, uh, we, we're still trying to make links with them. Uh, we, we know some of them, but it's, uh, it's not that easy. It's a, uh, quite a close community as far as I can see. Uh, but again, if, if there's uh, suggestions for how to do that, then uh, uh, um, you, they'd be very welcome. So I don't know if you want to add that. Okay. Uh, well, I'd just like to add that, uh, indeed, uh, as Alberto said, as I mentioned before, uh, renewable energies at the moment are maybe overrepresented. Uh, but uh, a proof that the, uh, the other energy activities, energy sources are not underrepresented. The fact that EDF is involved in the process. At EDF, we have almost 20% yeah, renewables, but we have essentially nuclear production, and we have coal and gas production, and so on. And so it's not forbidden in the, in the, in the it's not forgotten, sorry, in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> process. <laughs> sorry for the access. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are, we are building on, on our network, and we hope to extend it to uh, biofuels to uh, formal uh, generation and so on and oil and gas and so on so yeah it's it will it will be the case i think the talk we just heard looked well beyond renewables um, how does meteorology affect load? How does it affect the energy mix going forward? Whether we're talking about the planning for the day ahead or whether we're talking about a century from now. There are lots of applications in the energy industry that require weather and climate information. Um, how do they plan for maintenance and distribution? How will they be resilient to extreme events? It goes well beyond renewable energy. We think the people in this room, the people in the community, have a lot to add to do research and 
work together with the energy industry to help solve all of these issues. Okay. Oh. We have uh, about uh, five minutes, uh, so try to take as many questions as we can, but uh, if there's need, uh, also we could try to set up another session. Oh, uh, 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 we could be fine. But uh, no, it's good to see, uh, good to see the address. Carlos, sorry. Yeah, um, I'll try to speak fast then. Um, so I think it's a very interesting proposition. My, uh, my question is, it's about a challenge that I see for WMC going forward. So uh, according to your intention, you want to be really um, an organization embracing all the organization working in this field or being a voice for, for this. Well, at, at this stage in time, it looks like ICM uh, and WMC represent a good fraction of this community, but not the whole community. So my question is, what, what are the um, processes or the idea you have in mind uh, on how to enlarge WMC and engage with some of this community we just heard of that are not yet part of, uh, of WMC or ICM? Well, uh, I think a part of the answer, I, it's, my, it's my thinking at least, is that we will uh, increase the interest of the uh, other people from the uh, from the energy sector by demonstrating what we can achieve. Uh, so uh, let's start working. Let's work together. Let's uh, let's make some project. Show what we can do uh, with workshop, summer schools, and, and concrete project. And then I think it will raise the interest of the uh, of the rest of the community. That's, that's let's be pra pragmatic. To be pragmatic on that, I think the, it, it is the reason why we had the presentation yesterday on ESIP Federation. That personally, you know, I, I call myself the self-appointed ambassador of ESIP. Uh, why? Because it was an interest long time, so 98, 99 when it started, and it happens that with Dave Jones, I don't know if he's in the room, we had a chance to see how we start a process like the one we are starting now. So the, the reason why we made the presentation yesterday is just to see that it is a, a process which will take time. And if you want maybe to see the different steps and the problem to enlarge the system, you could just go through that, the opportunities or the risk. That it is one, but the other side too, that beyond that we come with the experience of WMO, the World Med Community, and that is quite, is quite an important. There is so many things which are already discussed there, but we would like to discuss them, especially with the energy uh, sector. And uh, I think now we, personally, the main issue is, I think, the science and the operation. We managed to get uh, a fair uh, idea how it could work. and. Uh, but the main issue is with the industry. That is why yesterday Claude Nahon was speaking about the World Business Council for Sustainable Development as also a coordinating system for, we don't need to do everything ourselves. We need to know how to hook to some uh, specific uh, network and system. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Just a quick one. Um, on Monday, some of us participated in a couple of excellent all-day um, seminars on energy for meteorologists and meteorology for, for energy specialists. And I just wondered to what extent you see capacity development as part of the WEMC mission. That is certain. You know, okay, so my, my title is Director of Outreach and Education. And uh, you know, we certainly see spreading these sorts of workshops, especially into the developing world, where they might not have access to that type of information. Um, you know, we would really like to be able to educate a larger number of people than those who would show up at a conference like this, many of whom are already experts and were able to talk at a very high level. So we would like to have activities like that, and we're going to look for forums like that specifically. Okay. Mary, thanks. Well, actually, I wanted to make a comment which is very much, uh, very close to what we just heard. This uh, seminar on, on Monday, where I had the pleasure to, to chair with Laurent, 
I was personally very much surprised. I expected to have talks about solar and wind as a fluctuating and difficult to handle renewables. And I ended up with a day which was, uh, for my, I, I thought it was 70 or 80% talking about fossils, talking about load, talking about all the other things. Uh, when we had a long standing record of metrologists. And that's, I think, the reason why was because Leon managed to get industry people on the floor who have a long standing experience in that. So they are already here, even if the program does a lot about solar cameras and, and so on, but they are in the room, and, and that's a really an, an outcome of the, the efforts of the group over there that I'd like to really mention, to bring those people together. Therefore, I'm, I'm very confident that Ramsey will do that job, and it's already quite a big thing done. Okay, that was my comment, and probably that's good for coffee right now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marian. That's much appreciated. And uh, by the way, the sky cameras ca are actually used also. One of the applications is to use them in combination with uh, gas uh, supply. So there is a, already a link there. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, uh, unless uh, would you like to add anything more, I'll wrap up here. Of course, w w whatever we want to do, there is always a question of resources and mainly financial resources. <laughs> so maybe from the people, uh, as uh, this morning the presentation was uh, trading in a way, met tra meteorologist, meteorologist, trader meteorologist. And the question which was raised by Alberto was, if you know that the, what ECMWF is doing, if tomorrow it stops, what is going to happen to you? So if it works, how much money it is brought, and if it stops, and I put the same question for all the institutions working on making this product or uh, preparing for this product uh, and how we could uh, we support them. So if you, just a question, if you make business, so could we invest or reinvest this business? So to make those things more continuous and maybe to have more training to have because actually what uh, uh, personally what I see the needs is there the business is there but all those institutions which are you know, working which have worked and we should work for that are going down as far as the resources concerning them so there is a big question there that I don't know if we could find any suggestion how to go about that Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much again to uh, uh, my colleagues, and, and it's been, uh, I think, a very interesting question, uh, sessions with a lot of questions. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation. Again, I remind you about the survey, and uh, you can stop us any time for questions. So I guess uh, it's true for me. I hopefully also yes. for yeah.